Valley Fresh Fair, featuring local restaurants, their owners, chefs, and great recipes made with Yakima Valley grown ingredients. Now here is hostess, Gayla Games. Hi, and welcome to Valley Fresh Fair. Today we are welcoming Chef Frank Magagna from Picasso's 717 Restaurant. Welcome, Frank. Thank you. Nice to have you on our show. Yes, my pleasure. Well, you are going to cook some wonderful food for us today. Yes, we are. I'm anxious to get started. Well, great. And what are we going to start cooking first? Well, the first thing we got to do is start our potatoes, because they're going to take a little longer than our sturgeon will take to okay. cook. Okay. So what we need to do is add uh, a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. And you have some beautiful potatoes here. I yes, see we have there's purple ones and red ones and little baby Yukon Golds. Fabulous. Did you get those from your garden? I didn't get them from my garden, but we got them from the farmer's market. Wonderful. Say when. That's perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to add a little bit of um, smoked paprika. And then smoked we want to add paprika. some smoked sea salt. Smoked sea salt? Yes. And about how much of that do we want? Just like a heavy pinch. A little heavy pinch. Is that good? That's perfect. And the smoked sea salt. Tell me about that. What they do, um, there's a company out of Woodenville and they mm -hmm. come down to Yakima Valley and they source their apple wood, take it back and smoke the apple wood while they're, the, the sea salt's in there. Fabulous. With it. So it actually, you can smell the... Yakima applewood smoked sea salt. Yeah. Very good. And the so, scent. Mm -hmm. So that we're just lightly tossing these guys. Mm -hmm. And then right in here. And then from here we'll go right into the oven. Perfect. After the potatoes, what's the next step? We need to start our red chimichurri. Chimichurri. Yeah, so we're going to start by um, just quartering an onion. And all okay. we're really trying to do is get pieces that are small enough for the, the food processor to grab onto. Okay. So just quarter pieces. So a quarter, we don't need to actually chop that onion any smaller. No, the food processor would do that for us. And one onion only. One onion. Okay. And then from there, we need one red bell pepper. Okay. And I kind of treat it like a little box when I cut it. So I cut off all four sides. And when uh -huh. I do that, it leaves all the, nice. the yuckies right there. Very nice. Yep. So just a rough chop on those also. Okay. The food processor will do the rest for us. One red pepper. Yeah. So one chopped red pepper. And then from there, we also want to do a seeded Roma tomato. And so I cut the top and the bottom off. Mm -hmm. And then I'll actually cut right in here and just kind of roll it like that. Beautiful. So all my seeds and yuckiness are wow. there. Wow. And then we're just left with the flesh of the tomato. And into the compost this goes? Yes, it does. Okay. I knew that about you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so two tomatoes is what we need. And then the only other fresh item we're going to add is the Italian parsley. Oh, yummy. So we're looking for one small bunch, about a half a cup, just roughly chopped. And then just simply. You said a half a cup? About a half a cup. Okay. Kind of, kind of packed, so which uh -huh. is I, about one bunch. Okay. Yep. So from here, we go right in there. Beautiful. Now all this is going to go right into that food processor over there. Ooh, it smells good. Yes. That Italian parsley just smells delightful. I do like that smell. Yes. It has that freshness to it. Oh, Most absolutely. chimichurris are actually green, and the Italian parsley is the the main component, mm -hmm. about eighty percent of it. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking cilantro, but. The yeah. parsley the, is... The parsley is the way to go. Yes, definitely. Okay. okay, and then here I have my dry ingredients uh -huh. pulled out. So I have a very Spanish influenced restaurant, so we're gonna kick it up a couple notches. And one of them is the teaspoon of chili powder. Okay, and teaspoon of chili the, powder. And the chili flakes, the red chili. So this is what's gonna really spice it up mm -hmm. for us. So. And you're adding about how much of those? That was a, about a tablespoon. A tablespoon? Yes. Wow. And then from there, if you want Fabulous. to add the garlic for us. Okay, and we wanted four garlic? Four garlic cloves. Oh, okay, very good. I lost count. Are we there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> One tablespoon of the smoked paprika. Okay. One table. No, you, you just dumped the whole thing. I measured that, that all. That's yep. right. Very good. One each bay leaf right okay. there. Okay. Bay leaf. Yep. And I kind of just give that a little. That works. That works perfect. Okay, and? Um, one tablespoon of a uh, dried oregano. Dried oregano. Yep. Okay. Right in there. And? and one heavy pinch of salt, so I okay. just kind of know Perfect. what my heavy pinches are. And a few grinds of... Freshly ground pepper? Yeah. Yum. Oops, there we go. Mm. Then from there, olive oil. And for the olive oil, we're looking for about a quarter cup. A quarter cup. And a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. This is all so fresh. The yeah. ingredients are just 
and good for you. They are very good and for you. Really this like is one this. healthy dish. Very, very much. So the olive oil that we're using is just regular olive oil. Mm -hmm. It's not extra virgin oil because we'll actually be cooking with it also. Okay. So from here, lock it in. I'm going to give it a few pulses mm -hmm. just to kind of get those large pieces chopped up. Okay. Then from there, we'll go ahead and um, turn it on for about a minute. About a minute? Okay. Well, here we are again at Valley Fresh Fair, and I want to welcome a guest that came in to see us who is very connected with Frank yeah. and he with her. <laughs> Kathy Sally, she owns a beautiful home called La Maison du Falaise, which close enough. means close <laughs> enough, thank you, which means what? It means the cliff house. Uh huh. Our house is on a beautiful rocky cliff, and it has a gorgeous view. Earlier, I had a chance to visit with Kathy at her beautiful home. Kathy, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Yes, and we have a little something going on in the background. Just a little something. Just a little something. <laughs> what can you tell us about what's going on in the background? Oh gosh, there yes, is a does. cooking class going on behind us. Um, Chef Magania is cooking a sturgeon mm -hmm. that he cut up for us, and now we know how to cook it, cut a sturgeon up. You built the home about a year ago, I understand. We've been in the house just a little over a year now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you plan this when you planned the house? Was this something that you wanted to do oh, yes. as you designed the home? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, when we actually drew the plans out, I knew I wanted to have cooking classes. I love to cook. I love to entertain. And so in designing the kitchen, that's how you get your dream kitchen. You say, gosh, I'd like to have cooking classes, honey. And he says, <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> Really, was he that agreeable? Honest he was. Fabulous. He is the man of my dreams. I'm extremely lucky. That is so wonderful. Yes, I got to dream, uh, build my dream kitchen, and it's fabulous. And I met Frank Magania, uh -huh. and it was funny the first time he came here and walked into my kitchen. The way he walked down, he just kind of caressed the countertops and had this faraway look in his eye. Uh, and I thought, OK, this is going to work. And he turned around. <laughs> yeah. And he turned around and said, yeah, I think this will work. So Frank comes to your lovely kitchen and he prepares a meal. Yes. Uh, how many times? Well, he doesn't prepare the meal. He and the class actually together once a month Fabulous. prepare the meal. That is so once a month. And how many people usually attend these cooking classes? Uh, the best size is about 14. Okay. That way, you know, the island is eight feet mm -hmm. and it's just perfect for everyone to get around the island, have a great view put an apron on, have room to get in and get their hands dirty, cutting things up or doing whatever he needs them to do. Does he insist that everyone come in and get their hands dirty? Not at all, or not at all. Say you have some shy people that just want to observe, is that possible? It's possible. In fact, there's probably a few sitting at the counter now. We have actually had girlfriends come, just groups of girlfriends, fun night out, sit at the counter, drink some wine, eat some hors d'oeuvres and visit, and occasionally pop over to the counter and, oh, you know, okay, what? I'll cut something fun. up. Fun. What, fun. Yeah. what do you feel that you have learned along with your passion for cooking? What do you feel that he has taught you? I mean, is there something? You know, it's sometimes it's difficult for me to learn anything at the class because, you know, I'm busy pouring wine or washing dishes or socializing, but I pick up one really important pearl of wisdom at every class. And Paul and I will catch each other eye and go, how come we didn't know this, you know? Things like, very simple things, like a pan, heat it up before you put your oil in it. Mm -hmm. Then things won't stick. Did you know that? I'm you sure knew. you did. You had a restaurant for 20 years. Most people don't know that. Right, right. Um, Lots of, lots of little things that I learned at, well, at each class. Well, I have class. to say in watching uh, Chef Magania earlier, as he was getting that beautiful sturgeon, the seven-year-old sturgeon mm -hmm. ready, I love the little cut that he put in the tail mm -hmm. before he filleted it. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. I didn't either. And what a thrill that is. Yeah. I can't wait to go and get a whole fish and, <laughs> and do that because you always struggle when you fillet a fish. Yeah, they usually go flying off the yeah, counter yes, or definitely. somewhere they're not supposed Absolutely. to. Absolutely. <laughs> so I thought, wow, well, it is so great to learn something new all the time. Yeah. Do you ever tire of having people in your home? Never. I mean, never. Never. You can probably, I have some very good friends behind us, and they would say to you, oh, yeah, she is the more than merrier <laughs> because I am. I love entertaining. I love socializing. Mm -hmm. I love eating, obviously. I love cooking. I love tasting great wines. And so this for me is just the ultimate.
So this is the Columbia River sturgeon. Wonderful. Yes. Um, and you know, fishing season is, is going strong right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, Sturgeon is uh, similar to halibut? Would no, you know? it's a little denser than halibut. Mm -hmm. I would say between halibut and swordfish. Okay. So right, right in between there. Wonderful. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and give it um, a nice, healthy um, marinade of this. Mm -hmm. So I would add one for each one, and then we're going to go ahead and rub it down. Okay. And we can even throw it like in a Ziploc baggie or a bowl or something. You know, just kind of right. let it go on there. And we want to let it go for about a half an hour. Okay. Yeah. At the and minimal. In the refrigerator. Yes. Okay. And we can even go to overnight if you wanted to do this oh, the nice. day before. Okay. Yeah. That would definitely, the flavors would become a little more intense, I would say. Correct. Then, if we let and these dry night. ingredients in here would begin to um, moisten up with mm -hmm. the, the vinegar and the... That's beautiful. Yeah. The smells are just incredible. Thank you. So hand you that one Thank and I'll you. put this in the fridge. Okay. And we'll come back in about a half an hour. Wonderful. So we have our potatoes in the oven. That's right. And our sturgeon has been marinating for about a half an hour. So we're ready to go ahead and start cooking it. Well, let's pull that out of okay. the refrigerator. I'm very anxious to continue with this. Okay. So there's not enough marinade or enough, not enough salt or pepper in the marinade to actually mm -hmm. season the fish okay. just to marinate it. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and season it. So a little kosher salt right on top and then some black pepper. And from there, we're gonna add about a tablespoon per every two sides to the pan okay. of olive oil. And I already have this heating up to a medium high. Okay, wonderful. And we'll go ahead and add these upside down. Medium high. That's right. And we'll start searing these guys off there. Now these guys are pretty thick, so they're gonna to need to sear for a couple minutes on each side. Okay. And then probably in the oven about eight to ten minutes. Ten minutes in the pan and eight to ten minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take that away. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Now while they're cooking on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and season this side because we need to season the whole thing. <laughs> okay. So as we are preparing this fish, and we talked about swordfish being mm -hmm. very similar. Would you be able to prepare this with halibut also? Yes, you would. Um, halibut's a, a little lighter of a fish, mm -hmm. so I'd probably put a little less chili in there. Okay. Yeah. So you don't want to overwhelm the... Definitely absorb it yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all these peppers and parsley and everything, we just get at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. you know, we, the prosper has a beautiful farm nice. market, and we just be able to go down there and get yeah. everything we need. We're so blessed. We really mm -hmm. are to be able to find our produce. And right in Yakima or the valley, the lower valley. That's right. Yeah, now, sturgeon nice. is available um, throughout most of the year down at Deep Sea Valley. Oh, wow. That's a good. Mm. Is this your very own recipe? Yes, it is. One passed down from generation to Nope, generation. I made it up myself. You're very creative. I like your, your um, cooking. You yeah. just really do a lot of fresh food, which is which is, um, and you focus on the good for you. Yeah, That's right. Definitely. Well, we could open the restaurant anywhere, but we really wanted to open the Yakima Valley to know our farmers uh -huh. and know where we're getting everything nice, from. Nice, So that was the goal of us moving to the valley to open the restaurant. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these guys over. Okay. Whoops. So now that they've been searing, nice and golden oh, brown beautiful. there, we'll yes. turn them over, and we'll go ahead and place this pan right in the oven. Let it go for about 10 minutes. Okay. We'll pull them out. And while these guys are roasting in the oven, we'll go ahead and finish the sauce, Perfect. the warm salad. Let me right do that for you. So I'll grab it. Thank you. Okay. So we've got that beautiful sturgeon in the oven. That's right. And Wonderful. now we're heating up our cast iron pan on high. And we're going to attempt to do is make this warm pepper salad. We just really want to sear the outside of the peppers, uh -huh. but leave them firm on the inside. So it's a nice crisp on the inside and yeah. sear. Okay. Split our onion. And then we're just looking for a kind of a, a thicker julienne on our onion. Okay. So by cutting it so thick, it will stay firm uh -huh. while it's, it's caramelizing. Okay. And we'll grab one red pepper. So you'll uh, treat it like a box, so it's cut off all four I sides. I really like that. Yeah. You learn something new every day. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. 
And then from here, we want to add a tablespoon of olive oil, okay. if we could. Just right to there. You want to drizzle? Yep. There you go. And then from there, I'll give it a nice, nice little toss. Okay. And from here, we'll add, working in two batches, we'll add half of it to the pan. There we go. You want to go ahead and give that a little mm -hmm. stir -free. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. We're going to let that brown up nice. very nicely. Let that kind of set a little. Yep. Okay. We developed a little, the charred almost, like mm -hmm. charred little mm -hmm. dark um, brown and black. Piece Beautiful. Right mm -hmm. Smells good. Mm -hmm. Give it a chance to do that. Okay. Yep, so we start seeing the colors starting right. to develop. Those onions are coming. Yeah. So what I do is, to stop this almost from cooking a little bit, if we slide it all over to one side, mm -hmm. then we'll add the remaining. There we go. A pinch. Pinch salt on this side. Okay. Then we'll allow the flavors to caramelize. And then this is going to be our warm pepper salad that finishes off Beautiful. our... Beautiful. Yep. While the surgeon is cooking, we had a chance to visit with Frank at his beautiful restaurant, the Cazo 717. Let's take a look at that now. How long have you been here? We've been here just about three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. So in about 2007? 2007, um, we opened up uh, in October, so we're about three and a half years mm -hmm. right now. But mm -hmm. yeah, and we came over on a, like a, me and my wife came over for a wine weekend to the Yakima Valley. Mm -hmm. We stayed over here in Prosser and we were looking for a great little restaurant to eat at. And we really couldn't find one that we were looking for and, and used to, so uh -huh. we decided to come over here and fix that problem open a restaurant. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. And you chose the little town of Prosser. We did. We what, loved this little community What attracted community here. you? Well, the neighborhood, um, the, 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 just the environment, the, everything about this area. We live, we have a house on a vineyard here. Uh -huh. so, oh, nice. So we wanted to grow up in wine country and have our kids here too. Beautiful. Us. Well, your menu um, uh, consists of Northwest Northwest Fair with a Spanish flair. So uh -huh. we have uh, quite a bit of tapas here. We do paella. We um, have like one, one or two pork chops, you know, um, a steak and some mm -hmm. pastas also, just, you know, fill in the menu, but mm -hmm. majority of it is uh, Spanish flair. Okay. Yes. And uh, could you tell me what are some of your customer, customers' favorite uh, oh, items yeah. on the menu? You is know, the, the prawns are uh, surprisingly one, one of the so favorite one of items. Favorites. Yeah, we take one of them and we stuff it with chorizo, mm -hmm. and then we wrap it in uh, like a prosciutto or a serrano ham, mm -hmm. and then we grill it off. And then we serve it with a saffron um, cream reduction. Sounds fabulous. We try to buy fresh from where where we can. So if the cherries start in Oregon a few weeks before they start up here, we'll mm -hmm. go down there and get them. Um, the other thing we do is we use um, some pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. So some pickled asparagus, or we try to freeze some of the fruit ourselves. Fabulous. So when it's um, so during the winter time, we were using blue uh, frozen blueberries, mm -hmm. so that we we just order them in, Very good lay them out, freeze them, and then we bring them back out for desserts and relishes throughout the winter time. Nice. Are you the blueberry picker in the summertime too? No, I don't actually go pick the blueberries. <laughs> I do pick cherries because me and my kids have a, a fun time to climbing up on the ladders and Great. pulling them. So Great. the same with the apples. We can get the apples kind of through cold storage year round. So we try to utilize those to the... That's nice. Our yeah. valley is so abundant. I don't think that people really realize what we do have to offer. Oh yeah. I mean, um, we, we get our nuts and our spices. We even dry some of the... Uh, vegetables and bring them back uh -huh. on our Very own. nice. Yeah. So. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I like how you really do your best to feature the Northwest and buy locally. And I think that, yeah, we all need to do that and become more aware of that. It's much healthier for us mm -hmm. if we purchase our foods as close to yeah. our um, area where we live. Yeah. There's so many little hidden treasures all around the valley that Definitely. not everybody knows about. So we go out and find those and mm -hmm. try to bring them in here and share them with everybody. What was your passion when you decided you wanted to open a restaurant? My passion, well, I wanted to know my farmer mm -hmm. as well as I know my winemaker. And to know that where we're buying the, our veggies and fruit from is very close to where the vineyard, the wine actually started from. So mm -hmm. the vineyard is usually right across the street from the farm that we got it from. So in being able to know everybody and our kids go to school together. And That's great. Just 
very community oriented. Very close lit, knit and family, yep. and everybody uh, kind of keeps their eye out for one another, mm -hmm. like the good old days. Yes, right. I think that's what Prosser does remind me of. It's a beautiful little town, and, and that's I think we, everybody knows everybody. Yep, yeah. that's what we want. Very special. And do you have certain uh, uh, wine list? What do you? Oh yes, our wine list here. The focus has always been uh, Northwest wine list, um, a heavy emphasis on the Yakima Valley, uh -huh. and a definite focus on Prosser because um, that's just where we are. Do you have a full service bar also? We do. We do offer full spirits and, mm -hmm. and, and, and all those goodies. Also, those are uh, heavily influenced with the, the local uh, distilleries that are popping up all over. Well, I know that you are very busy with Picasso 717, mm -hmm. but I also understand that you are going to be opening a restaurant in Kennewick that's area. That's right. So um, in here in a few weeks, we should be opening up um, in the South Ridge area of Kennewick. So right Fabulous. off at 395. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your seating capa capacity in Picasso's is about 60? We're, we're about 60 here, and we're going to go to almost 100 over there. Boy, so. you're just increasing about by half yes. a little. And are you going to stay in Prosser in any way? We are. We're going to uh, keep doing um, uh, a dinner. We're going to increase the program that we have over at Desert Wind, and we're going to incre uh, include some dinners there. In your new restaurant, what is what will it be called? It will call uh, Picasso 717. Okay. Yep. And um, a menu will still kind of the same? Yeah, stay? it's worked incredibly well for us here. We're uh -huh. just going to extend that to the area with a little bit more uh, population. Nice, and you'll have just a little more room to, to greet more customers. That's right. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our salad looks like it's ready. Yep, and I'll go ahead and check on the sturgeon Wonderful. right now. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, and the sturgeon's looking oh, perfect. Oh, I can't wait. And I think our potatoes are just about done too. Okay. So let's sit there. Beautiful. Grab our roasted potatoes, and I'll go ahead and start putting them on the platter here. Okay. Now they just smell great. Mm hmm. purple potatoes in my garden this year. I just got in an abundance. Oh. They were just delicious. There we go. Put back in there. And from there we'll go ahead and start plating up our sturgeon. Presentation, presentation. Yes. Now, I saved a little bit of the raw chimichurri mm -hmm. off to the side. If you go ahead and just put a tablespoon or so okay. on, each, on each one. Perfect. So what we do is we have this cooked tomato peppery salsa flavor, mm -hmm. and then this adds the raw component back to the dish. Okay. And then from there, mm. I'll go ahead and I'll top oh, that it. Looks so good. Uh -huh. So there's our Columbia River sturgeon with a red chimichurri and warm pepper salad. Excellent. Yes. I can't wait to taste it. To prepare today's recipe, you will need the following ingredients. Frank, this is a lovely dish. What wine do you recommend that we should have with this? Well, we picked a wine that um, we thought would go great with the dish is a, a Semillon from Chinook Winery. Mm -hmm. And they're located in the heart of the Yakima Valley down in Prosser. They've been there for probably about 25 years. So then they know their wine. They, they do know their wine. So I'll go ahead and open it and I'll pour a little bit for us. Wonderful. Now, one of the things that we do when we're doing the cooking class over mm -hmm. at Kathy's house is we select a, a different winery throughout the Yakima Valley to join us and cook throughout the evening. So How? And so they talk about their wine a They talk bit about the too, wine, they bring some wine to taste, and then we pair it to go with the, the menu that we're actually cooking that what night. What a treat. It's an evening of like dining out, but even better. You're in a beautiful home learning how to cook That's and learning about the wine from the winemaker. That is excellent. So this is an 07. A very good year. Yes. May I? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, here's some great food. Oh. Absolutely. Thank Cheers, you. everyone. You're welcome. 
Well, I am ready to taste. How about you? I am definitely ready Beautiful. to Beautiful. So we'll cut off a piece for us to, to Ooh, try right thank there. you. Mmm. Grab me a pepper. I've got my onion. Mm. Mm-hmm. This is excellent. You absolutely, everyone at home, must. Well, thank you. Prepare this. This is excellent. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. For this recipe, including the variations, go to our website at kyve.org or yvmh.org. Kathy and Frank, thank you so much for joining us on Valley Fresh Fair. And everyone, be sure that you visit Kathy at her beautiful home, La Maison de Falaise and Frank at Picasso 717. It's a must. And everyone, be sure and tune in next month when our guests are Kay Carberry and Jan Mendenhall, and we may have a surprise guest also. You don't want to miss this. God bless everyone. Thank you. For more information on today's show, including recipes, go to kyve.org. Valley Fresh Fair is underwritten by Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital to better serve our community. Thanks also to Julie Tony, Fickle and Son Construction, Bemis Appliance, and Yakima Valley Museum.